Good morning, my friends. It's Roger Mud Fossil Unity. Fabulous day today. The um, Royal Institution, which is one of the very, very prestigious institutions, I believe it's in uh, England, and um, they are admitting that the standard model is wrong. Now they say, could it be wrong? Whenever they say, could it be wrong? They're saying, yeah, it's wrong. Well, let's talk about it. And they do, and they admit it's wrong. And it cannot work with the standard particles that they consider a gigantic neutron, a gigantic proton, a tiny electron. It does not work whatsoever. This does work, and I will show you how it works in experiments, because we have done them. This is what an electron really is. It's a back-to-back, positive-negative, just like a bar magnet in a ball. Photons are two of them back-to-back, -back, you know, up and down. Protons are 1835 or 1837, I'm not certain. And neutrons are 1836 or 1838. They're the even, the proton is the odd. Once the odd, that becomes polar. All right? This is neutral because it's an even number. Now, what does the core look like? That is what the core of a hydrogen looks like, and it has ton tons of little particles, 1839 or whatever, and then it has one additional one out in the orbitals that wants to get in, but this says, no, I have plenty right now. I am resonance stable at that number, and that number is this number. Whatever that number is, 1835, 1837, it's, it's become, that's the proton. But a proton is not one gigantic proton. And a neutron, they say, loses an electron that was attached to it and becomes a proton. Well, the proton, though, is the remainder of all those particles. It's not one gigantic particle left. So let's look at the experiments. Rodney sent me something this morning, just like Christmas. Okay, before we look at my little Christmas presents here, I'm going to show you this first. This is red laser light acceler just going through the air, and that's as much as it would glow. This is accelerated, same wave, only now it's accelerating because it's approaching a venturi. I'm going to explain all this. These are the Higgs fields that are shown, and there is a special particle that I want you to look at that created this particle here, which is quite unusual. These are the actual... I believe they're photons, back-to-back, -back, what we would call electrons, but electrons really are dipoles. They are not a single charged particle. Now, and those dipoles go flying through the air. They spin to the right, drift to the left. After the Venturi, they're expanded. They compress up here because it's slowing down. Now, let's go a little deeper. Good morning, my friends. It's Roger at MFU once again, and I woke up this morning. I said it can't be Christmas, but sure enough, I got some presents this morning, fabulous presents. Now, this is from Rodney, uh, and, and again, it's light accelerated, and if you can't see it's accelerating and you can't see it's light, I, I don't know what to say. This, you see, the, it's, it's coming through like a bullet. The very tip of these of these wave patterns is the particle and it is literally spinning sizzling inside of here and because it is a polar particle as it spins it creates the impression that you're looking at, at rings around it and what they are doing is as that particle forces its way through the, the particles that are in front of it, it excites them as it spins around, and they follow it around glowing. That's what that is. It's called a Higgs field. And they are circular, polarized fields that circle the polarized particle that is forcing its way through their regions. That's what you see there. All right, we know the atomic model is not correct. I'm going to go through this very fast, and then I'll go through it extremely in detail at some point, but I have done it many, many times. Now, that is the red laser light, just pulsed red laser, and these little particles that are illuminating are the free-floating electrons that are in the air. That is what concusses, and that is what's glowing here in these waves. There's a single particle here. That's the same red laser light, only this time we're putting it through a Venturi. And a Venturi is nothing more than that. Two 
round metal drums forcing that to accelerate to get through that orifice. The light wave obviously is accelerating the particle. Obviously we're seeing the particle is a particle. It's not it's not a wave, it's a particle. This is a single slit, it's not a double slit. The interference pattern is not interference, it is, it is um, repulsion. That's repulsion. These particles want to be away from each other. They are being forced through that venturi to crush each other. They all own huge regions and they are tiny, 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 tiny particles. Tiny, 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 tiny forever tiny. But they own huge regions. And when they force themselves through these other people's regions, because every other one of these little dots wants its own little spot. And we're coming through and saying, no, 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 there's big balls coming through here. They all glow. There's something to do with when they impact each other, they glow. It creates heat. It creates light. It's a friction. You rub your hands together. Same thing. It's the same. Anytime anything impacts with anything else, it's nothing more than particle against particle. And what are the particles? They are whatever surrounds atoms. And what surrounds atoms? We call them electrons. There is nothing, zero, that exists that is not surrounded by electrons. Nothing. So what does that mean? When I go like that, I'm hitting an electron against electron. I'm not... It's not trying to catch each other, it's trying to push each other away. And this is doing the same thing here. That's why it's illuminating. I cannot account for what luminesces. I can see it. And this is exactly what you do see as it settles down. Coming out of the accelerator, it's still blurry, and then it sort of blurs down a little bit, kind of bright, and then it sort of settles down, gets darker and darker. But in the meantime, you see two cycles that are back-to-back -back dipoles. Dark and light, dark and light, dark and light, dark and light. What does that mean? Positive and negative. To me, that's what it means. And that means that that, to me, is probably a photon. Right? Well, I know it's light, so I'm going to have to call it a photon. Now, they can be broken apart, they become electrons. When it was back in the Venturi, they were particles that were separated from the dark. The dark was nowhere to be seen. Let's take a look at that. All right, so don't forget now. What we have here is the Venturi is up here. You know, there's two round drums like in here somewhere. And that forces these particles to, to come together into each other. And because I say they own huge regions, although the particle is tiny, that creates... So, somehow they separated charges. That's all I can say. I don't know how to explain it other than that. Because that is white of the most magnificent white. And there's black coming back in here. See the dark, dark? And then it fades off into these... <laughs> I don't know what to say other than it's there. Now, how it's separated out, because it's here too. The darkness comes out here. There's some here. There's some here. They, they they're all surrounds the white. Now, why isn't it mixed together? Somehow they separated charges. And to me, that says whatever is in here can reconstitute. So it's plasma. Now, what does that mean? Are they electrons? I think they are. And what are electrons in my world? Electrons, because don't forget, now this is light. This is not big protons like they use at, at CERN. Right, CERN is using particles that are literally 8,000 times bigger than that particle. 8,000 times bigger. So what are we doing? We're seeing the smallest end result of what CERN is doing. They are looking, they're seeing the same looking particles, but they're huge because they got thousands of them in a ball. It's still doing the same thing. They look the same, but we are down at the atomic level electronic level. This is electronic level. They're in the atom nuclear level. Totally different situation. Just so you understand, they say nobody can see these things, and you just saw them. These are electron neutrinos. That's the high voltage electron which was accelerated, smashing into the ether, which is not accelerated, just sitting there laying around having a nice time, and they shoot off like 
billiard balls because that sucker came through there so fast that everybody got to get out of the way. You see those showers go flying. Cherry Yankoff radiation is the white. The electron showers were all those Higgs fields produced by electron neutrinos. That's what I saw. Okay, we're just simply showing what they're showing as these waveforms. And they are polarized spinning disks of energetic particles. Alright, there's the Higgs, I mean the um, Cheryankov coming at us. You see these little white Those are those high energy neutrinos. Neutrinos. And then when they smash into the standard space, they fluff these fields up, these spinning particles. Those are the electron showers. Now that's what I see. Now here's what else I see. You see that particle right there? That is a reverse spinner. All of these are spinning right hand spin, that's spinning left hand spin. And to me, left hand spin gathers the field into itself. And then it did this. Now this is where it gets kind of interesting. You saw that white particle and here's how it ended up decaying. Um, it appears to have impacted with another field and it's starting to step down into its own field and created what I, I'm calling a mini light trumpet. I don't know what it is and I don't know if it's going to get bigger. I don't really know. But it's it's um that's that's not a that's a pretty unique particle. All right, I suppose I want to leave it at that. But I want you to know that this is all that Rodney used. I have the same stuff here. Rodney's the one that has the expertise with these pictures. But all he used is this a, a, a Bosch construction laser. He's got the metric one, but mine is a GLM fifteen. You know, feet and inches is his metric, and then he has this one of these Samsung phones. Now the phone is really important. This is a Galaxy Five or Galaxy S three. I'm not sure how you say that. It's Galaxy, whatever it is. Um, anyway, this phone using the selfie um, camera is what he's using, I believe. I, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't get too deep into taking my own pictures. I took a few and I, I, I gave up. <laughs> Rodney was flooding me with pictures. I mean, he sent me literally hundreds of pictures a day when we were doing this. And uh, today I got dozens of pictures. And, and they were fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. So, but that's all they need. Now, I'm going to ask you something. Maybe Samsung wants to help Rodney. Maybe Bosch wants to help Rodney. We need lasers. We need some p p cameras and microscopes and things to do this kind of research. We don't have any money. I mean, I, I, I don't want any money myself. I, I, I'm, I, I do just thinking, really. <laughs> So I don't really need anybody, but Rodney does actual hands-on stuff. Maybe somebody can help him. And if you can, let me know. All right, so thank you so much. And um, I think it's time to re-examine every single thing that we have assumed and structured our whole belief system on. I mean everything. All right, thank you. God bless you.